For the complete text of this game and for many more as well as lots more instructional videos, check out alpha-score.com and sign up for the free trial. In this game we've got three recycling centers, center one, two, and three, and we're going to be recycling exactly five kinds of materials. Now you've really got two sets of variables or two sets of entities here. We've got our recycling centers, one, two, and three, and then we've got our materials, our glass, newsprint, plastic, tin, and wood, or GNP, T, and W, as we're going to refer to them from here on out. So which one is going to become your entities and which is going to become the groups into which you're going to put them? Sometimes people get a little bit confused with this. Now in this game it might not be that hard, but here's a few tips just so that you're clear on which is your groups and which is your entities. First of all, if there's a natural grouping order, a natural way of putting them into groups or a natural way of them fitting into groups, go with that. So in this case, our recycling centers seem like fairly natural items to be groups because we've got a recycling center and we're going to be putting the entities or the materials into it. So we're going to say center one might recycle glass and wood. Well, that would be putting those entities into that group. So naturally, our recycling centers probably look like they're going to be our groups. And that's usually the first step you want to choose in picking what your groups is. If you're really not sure, another way to go with is actually take the smaller number of items and make those your group. So in this case, again, our recycling centers, there's only three of them, whereas there's five materials. So let's make our recycling centers our groups. So we've got our groups, one, two, and three, and then we've got our entities, G, N, P, T, and W. So we've got our groups, we've got our entities, we need our placeholders, where are we gonna put them? Well, we're told we could just draw a bunch of lines under one, two, and three for places to put our entities, but we're told specifically that each recycling center has to recycle at least two of these types of entities, but not more than three. So we can actually fill in two solid lines under each of our groups, and one more dotted line, that third line is dotted because that's our maximum. So we know we have to fill the solid lines, that's our minimum, and we can fill that dotted line, but we don't have to, and we can't go beyond that. So we can have two or three, but that's it. So now we've got our placeholders. And finally, you wanna understand the frequency at which your entities occur. And so we are told that we are recycling exactly five kinds of materials. Now that doesn't mean that we're gonna be recycling them exactly once each. It just means that they have to occur at least once. So each of our GNPT and W are gonna to have to occur at least once because that way we've recycled exactly five kinds of materials. But we may have some of them occurring twice because it's still five kinds of materials. It's just being recycled at more than one recycling center. So our frequency for our materials or our entities is a minimum of once each and we don't know the maximum. So we wanna put down that minimum of once each for our entities and we're ready to move on and take a look at our rules because we've got the three things you really need for every diagram. You've got your placeholders, you've got your entities and you've got the frequency at which they occur. Now looking at our first rule here, we're told any recycling center that recycles wood also recycles newsprint or if we have W, we have to have WN. So we can just put that down as an if then statement, if W, then WN. Now you could do the contrapositive, but it's not necessary here. Generally, you don't need to do a bunch of contrapositives unless you have a lot of if then statements. So let's just stick with if W, then you have WN. Now this is not to be confused with W and N always go together. You can have N on its own. It's only W, the left side of the if then statement, that triggers this rule. So when you have W, this rule comes into effect. If you don't have that left side, don't worry about the right side. So when we have W, we have WN, but we could have N on its own. So that's our first rule. Looking at our second rule, everything in center two is going to be recycled in center one. So center one's a copycat, it's gonna copy everything center two does, but center one can do some things on its own too. So if we put wood in center one, it doesn't have to appear in center two. This rule does not mean that one equals two. It means that one copies what two does. So anything you put into two immediately gets transferred over into one, but stuff that goes in one can just be there on its own. So we're gonna put little arrows going from two over to one. So anything we put over in two, we know we immediately copy it over into one. And that's one way you can represent this rule. It's nice because it gets it right in the diagram and you're not gonna forget about it. When you go to put something into two, you immediately remember, oh, I've gotta copy that over into one. 
And our final rule, we've got one recycling center only is going to be recycling plastic. So we know we have exactly one P, so we can put that down. And there's actually two rules here. Then we're told the recycling center that recycles plastic is not going to recycle glass. So if you have plastic, no glass. So that's a new uh, rule or a new if then statement that we have here. If P, then no G. Now, you can do your contrapositive. It means if you have G, you're not gonna have P. Basically what it's saying is P and G can't go together. We've got one center recycling plastic and there's no glass in there. So now we've got our entire diagram set up. We've got all our rules represented and we're ready to go on and take a look at our questions. So just before we go on to our questions with this diagram, there is one more thing that you can add to this diagram. And that is if we look at our rules and our entities, you can always do a double check right at the end of setting up your diagram and your rules and just check each of your entities and see if there's a rule about them. And we see here we have a rule about glass, newsprint, plastic and wood. So you can just put a little maybe tick next to each of those or just mentally tick them off as you go through and check to see if you have a rule about them. But we don't have any rules about tin. So you don't have to do this, but just as some additional information that can help you, you can circle tin or circle the T and we can call that a free floating entity, meaning it can go anywhere in our diagram without violating our rules, as long as all the rest of the rules work. But it means that if you have a spot and you need to fill it, you can throw T in there and not worry that you're violating a rule. So you don't have to go back and check a rule about T. So you don't need to do this, but it's just a little extra information before we go on and tackle our questions. For the complete text of this game and for many more as well as lots more instructional videos, check out alpha-score.com and sign up for the free trial.